How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student. And today we are going to be talking about the importance of STD screening options because it benefits literally anyone. Whether or not you are in a monogamous relationship, polyamorous relationship, open relationship, or if you're just exploring your sexuality, routine STD screenings is incredibly important for your health and the health of your sexual partners. STD screenings not only allow you to treat any recent infections that you might have, but also to prevent future risks of cancer. Also, there are multiple long-term effects of untreated STDs, such as chlamydia causing pelvic inflammatory disease, along with gonorrhea, but also things like syphilis having different tiers of how it can affect your health. So the quicker you identify the problem, the quicker you are able to treat the problem and the less harmful effects you have for the future. Unfortunately, most clinics that I know of and have been to when you go in and ask for an STD check or an STD screen, the physician or the clinic only offers limited options and the limited options that are available are not suitable for someone depending on their gender identity, whether or not they have gender dysphoria, religious obligations, or also victims of sexual trauma might not be willing to do certain STD screenings that limited clinics offer. So it's very important for every clinic to have a robust set of options for your patient so that they can get adequate STD screenings done. And actually, there are multiple ways to do an STD check depending on what STD it is. There's blood tests, urine tests, there's also pap smears that the physician can do, but also there are self-examinations that are becoming more and more available. and. It's very important for those self-examinations to be available to every patient regardless of which clinic they're going to. Because of my gender identity and also the fact that I was raised as someone who practices Islam, for having a physician check my sensitive genital areas has always been something that's uncomfortable, something that both gives me gender dysphoria, but also I've been told because of the way I was raised in my religion that p other people that's not my partner should be examining or looking at. And although I don't have those beliefs anymore, I do know that there are a lot of religious people that are not comfortable with their physician being that invasive because it goes against their religious beliefs. And that's why options benefit everyone. Also, regardless of gender identity, victims of sexual violence might have incredible, incredible trauma with association of people being invasive in those areas of their body. So they also benefit from this. I too have avoided going to clinics to get STD screenings done because I just ultimately feared that my clinician was going to make the decision on which form of testing that I was going to get done. So I was incredibly afraid of that. But around two years ago, when I met my partner, I decided to get STI screening done for our safety. So well, when I walked in, I actually had one of the most affirming, most affirming experiences with getting STI screenings done with my current provider because my provider is trans inclusive and tries to be trauma informed. When I walked in, uh, my clinician asked me, what do you wanna get done? And I said, I wanna get an STI screening done. And I thought she was immediately going to jump to the pap smear option. But she said, well, what are you comfortable with? Do you want a blood test? Do you want a urine test? Do you wanna do a self pap? Or do you want me to administer a pap for you? And I just remember it being so, so inclusive and I remember Ha feeling powerful when she gave me those options that I was able to make these decisions about my body and take ownership of my health. And of course, my, my clinician told me about the efficacy of each exam. Some, some of those tests are not as efficacious as other tests, but to have those options available to me and to know the risks and benefits and also disadvantages of each option was really, really affirming to me as a patient. 
It also really allowed me to think about what kind of clinician I want to be once I become a licensed physician. That whole experience made me realize how limited medical education is when it comes to centering the patient. Most of my, me edu me most of my medical education so far has been identify the illness, identify and treat it, but it has never been about the patient itself. It's never centered the feelings of the patient, centered the patient's comfort when it comes to me treating my patient. So that whole experience just blew my mind and opened my eyes to how medicine can be, but it's not completely getting there. So what does it mean for you, the patient? A patient that wants to have those options available, but you know that your current primary care provider or obstetrician or urologist or whoever it is that you're seeing for STI screenings is not offering those options. Well, now that you know that all these options are available, simply just ask your clinician that you want those specific tests done when you want STI screening. And if it is a clinician, that respects their patient, they will say, yes, absolutely, I can offer that to you. And if your current clinician is the type of clinician that mandates you do things a certain way and that doesn't really give you autonomy as a patient, then it might be time to think about switching to another provider who does give you that autonomy. Also, if you are watching this and you are a future clinician or a practicing clinician and hasn't thought of introducing these practices to your clinical environment, definitely think about it. It will definitely the, make the relationship that you have with your patient that much better. Anyways, that's it for this video. I really wanted to emphasize my personal experience getting STI screenings done, but I can also see how this may benefit a lot of people. So please continue to advocate for yourself in the healthcare setting because that's very, very important. Please like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and some of the advocacy work I do. And I'll see you on the next video. This is Ben.